the start of the 2021 Rolex Fastnet race was brutal with 20 to 25, even 30 knots of breeze pushing against a spring tide, the sea state was horrendous, particularly in the exit from the Solent. Even some of the world's best sailors were describing intimidating conditions and a massive relief at having got through unscathed. But after just 34 hours, the race had its first finisher, the maxi trimaran Gitana 17. Whilst there were two other Ultime trimarans in this class, the focus had been on Gitana from the start, and they delivered. So the course is very simple. We start uh, here from, from Coz, and uh, we have to go to uh, Fast Network and uh, come back to Cherbourg. Good start and uh, good speed after that and uh, no mistake in the channel, which is, uh, was complicated. Uh, lots of tack and uh, lots of wind and uh, very rough sea state, so it was a difficult part. A very light spot approaching the fast net, which will be probably maybe could be the key of the, of the race. You have to choose between uh, wind pressure and chip, which is never easy. And, uh, so, a busy night. We are very happy about this race. The boat was uh, very good and uh, the crew has done a good job too. You have a record now. We have a record, a record it's because first it's the first so time. <laughs> <laughs> Behind them, the pace was also brisk, both in the multi-hull fleet and in the monohull fleet, where the star of the show, at least the biggest boat in the show, was the giant Club Swan 125 Scorpius. Brand new and only just launched, they were taking things pretty carefully. Until this race, they hadn't sailed in much more than 20 knots of breeze. But as the crew settled into their pace, there was one boat that they just could not shake off at least not in the first half of the race. And that was the Amoka 60 Apivia. At half the size of Scorpius, they were going like a train. With line honours in the Vendée Globe race, Charlie Dellen with Paul Mailhat on Apivia were Amoka favourites. What was very interesting uh, for the start of this Rolex Fastnet race is that we had very strong wind, uh, 25, 30 plus of wind, but of dead flat water uh, in the western solid, and that's conditions you basically never see. And the tide was helping us as well, so we could sail uh, like a kind of a, a new mode, you know, a mode we, we never use. It's uh, folding upwind, you know, it's, uh, normally can, we cannot really do this. Uh, once we sailed through the Ra Blanchard with the tide, uh, the, the tide just ch uh, changed direction and the gate was kind of closed on some of our competitors. Uh, the boats that were a bit behind already, like they, they, they just faced face, you know, you know, too, too strong of a tide to sail through, you know, so they had to tack and, and sail north of the uh, Cascade uh, TSS. We just managed to, to get the right timing and that's, that was pretty amazing. You know, it's a legendary race, you know, it's, it's not more complicated than this, you know, it's, it's, just, it's a big history. Uh, it can be very difficult, the weather can be extreme. And that's my third time uh, competing in the Fastnet, uh, my second win. Yeah, since the race is going well, it's working well for me, so... Sam Davies on Initiative Kerr, the Amoka 60, is an English lady with a huge following in France, and they came fifth in class. 
So that was uh, just incredible stuff. It was pretty scary. And then once we were out, yeah, the sea stoat was terrible. Um, but uh, Initiative Co is, uh, is a boat that sailed around the world and she's designed to handle that stuff. Uh, no problem. We've got a cockpit with a, um, a protection, like a roof over the top. The real ones who, who did that properly are uh, the guys who haven't arrived yet, uh, who are still out there. And we felt for them because for us it was kind of cheating and a little bit easier. <laughs> Adrian Keller's brand new 84-foot catamaran Allegra won on handicap in the Mocker fleet on its maiden race. Well, actually the start itself was, was quite spectacular. It was 30 knots uh, into, into the tide, then mm. coming out of Hearst Castle, the, the weather got really tough. Um, but I, I will remember the fast then, although it was uh, 0.45, pitch dark, but still... <laughs> To see that light from very close is uh, it's unique. It's uh, very special. That's a memory for a lifetime. From there, we've started to see some of the class 40s cross the line before the bulk of the fleet heads towards the finish. But it's going to be tricky. Conditions have dropped significantly from the start, and with the tide against them, getting to the finish is proving to be quite hard. <laughs> Thank you.